Hey everybody, it's Triforce again. Pretty much I'm home this time. And I don't know if you guys noticed, but uh, the latest news is uh, they came out with a new um, Hyrule Historia book out in Japan. Um, news of this dropped about, let me see, uh, less than a day ago. Um, the purpose of this book is to actually go over the, um, the, art, the history and the artwork of the Legend of Zelda characters. Um, Link and Zelda, I'm not even sure if Ganon's involved in it, but um, it also talks about so the official timeline slash reality line that they have for the game. Now I know for a fact that Nintendo stated that they would not release an official timeline um, for The Legend of Zelda which pieces together the entire series of the games, 15 games spanning. Um, I read the article. Uh, from what it looks like, it looks like the article just talks about a portion of the timeline, mainly the beginning, which I hope that's what it's about because um, I don't really, I'm not too much of a fan of them trying to explain the entire timeline. I prefer if they were to like give like hints about certain pieces of it, so that would leave us with the adventure of actually trying to figure it out for ourselves or all of us having our own uh, version of the timeline. I never really voiced my opinion of what I thought the timeline was, so I'm just going to put this video out to give everybody an idea of what I think the timeline is, and uh, what are the reasons why, and the theories that I have behind them. Now, the difference between my timeline, uh, uh, um, uh, or what I think the timeline is for The Legend of Zelda, and how other people um, got their timeline, was I don't start at the beginning, I actually start at the end and I work my way backwards so uh, <clears throat> in the end we all know that Zelda 2 is the final um, the end of the actual legend because it's no longer a legend it's actually called Zelda 2 the Adventures of Link and the Adventures of Link starts off an entire different trilogy well not trilogy it starts off an entire different story of Link's adventures with Princess Zelda i.e. the three CDI games and the cartoons so that's Link's adventure um, I've also known something about the end. Um, there's a small little telltale about the games that are involved in the ending part of this Legend of Zelda. All the links have brown hair, um, or what I call um, dirty blonde hair. So that games like um, um, Link to the Past, Oracles of Seasons Ages, um, Link's Awakening, Zelda 1, Zelda 2. Um, and that's my actual, for, for the ending part, that's the actual order that it goes in. Um, with the exception of A Link to the Past. I think the Link, of the Link to the Past is a standalone game that stands somewhere in the middle of the, the timeline between the beginning and the end. And the reason why I say that is because I think Four Swords has a lot to do with the bridge between time. So if they were ever to make a game called The Legend of Zelda Order of Time, um, which would be another OOT um, uh, it will all have the same acronyms as the Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. But um, I think the Four Swords Adventures, the Four Swords that involves the, um, the Zelda 3 um, packaged in game with the Game Boy Advance, I think that is the middle ground. And from that, we can try to find out how you piece the past to the future. So um, let's talk about, let's finish up the story on um, the, time, the timeline sequence for the ending. Um, in, or uh, in Oracles of Seasons and Ages, Hyrule, um, the Triforce summons um, Link to tri um, Castle Hyrule, um, sends him to a, a, new, um, a new land in the world of Hyrule, and in which he has to defeat all the monsters, blah blah blah, Ganon, so forth, so forth. If you ever notice the end of the game, the end of the game has it where Link takes a boat back to Hyrule. When that game ends with Link on the boat back to Hyrule, if you look at Link's Awakening, it starts off with Link on a boat sailing in the middle of the ocean. Who knows where his destination is? My theory is that's that you know Oracle of Seasons connects connects to um, Link's Awakening. So Link's on his way back to Hyrule after just defeating Ganon. Ganon's like, I got something for you, and Ganon uses his powers from wherever he is because Ganon is a triforce of power, and he has a thunderstorm destroy Link's ship, whatever. If you notice in the game. Link does not have a sword. So you have to ask yourself, where did his sword go? My theory is his sword drifted to Hyrule in Zelda 1. 
when you beat the game, um, Link's Awakening, you know, Link is just out in the ocean, uh, just floating on his shield, or, or a piece of wooden raft, or whatever the case may be. And um, his sword drifted to Hyrule Shore, which will be Southern Hyrule in Zelda 1, because that's the, that's the map land, that's what it's called, it's called Southern Hyrule, um, when you play Zelda 1. Um, Ganon obviously rampages that land and destroys everything, that's why there's no towns, people are living in huts, caves, trees, and so forth and so forth. If you look at the intro to Zelda 1, only four screens over is the southern um, ocean line. So you'll notice that that's where the ocean comes in from. Well, like in any war, when a soldier's de dead or you can't find a soldier's body and you find his dog tag and his gun or whatever, most people make a makeshift grave, right? So if Link's mag uh, magic sword or the... Uh, the Master Sword drifts to the shore of Hyrule and you find that without Link, what would um, the first thing you do? You say, okay, you either think Link's dead or he died out in the sea and the sword was the only thing to come back. So to commemorate his death, you make a makeshift grave. Well, where do you find the magical sword slash Master Sword in Zelda 1? So, anyway, we all know that Zelda 2, The Adventures of Link is the actual sequel to Zelda 1, so we don't need to put that timeline together. All we need to do is state that 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 part of Hyrule is North Hyrule. Um, if anyone has ever um, gotten any of the Valiant comics or the, there was an actual, I gotta try to look for this so I can find it again, but when I was younger, they showed you the map of Zelda 2 and then the map of Zelda 1 connected. And when you play Zelda 2 and you go down into Death Mountain, you're on the opposite side of Death Mountain. A lot of people do not take into consideration that if you're creating a world, a world is actually 3D. So when you play Zelda 1 and you go to Death Mountain from the south, you're only looking at one side of Death Mountain. There's another side to Death Mountain, and then on that other side begins the top area of um, Zelda 2. Um, if you don't believe me, you can play the game and check it out. There's some type of geographical hints that talks to you about the game. Yes, we know it's fiction, but I looked in the games hard enough and no noticed that. So that there are a lot of intricacies and details, but I don't want to spoil it for anyone. I want you guys to go out, play the games for yourself, and find out the details of it that connects the storylines together. But uh, that's my story for uh, the timeline for the ending of Zelda. So let's go back to the beginning now. Or well, let's go to the beginning. Well, Skyloft is the world of Hyrule before the world of Hyrule was born. So it's the prequel, from my opinion. Um, I have not gone through the entire thing yet. I'm taking it slow because everything I play in Skyward Sword, I try to match it to other games. So when I play Zelda, it's longer for me to go through the game than other people because I have to record pieces of the game, save it here, there, so I can mismatch it to certain things that I found out in the other Zelda games. I did that with Wind Waker. Like when you go into Terra's personal room on our captain's ship, I took a picture of everything in her room. You find out, you see the old map of Hyrule from Ocarina of Time, you see a picture of Zelda's mother, you see all types of stuff in there that you can, like, it's like, it's like being a historian collecting pieces of data to try to, you know, put together your piece to the future, um, to what the actual history is. So, so for Skyward Sword, I'll leave it as a prequel, that's the world before Hyrule was even created. So, let's start at Ocarina of Time. Well, anyone who's played Ocarina of Time should know that the game is the, the the beginning of the time break not the beginning of Hyrule because if you play Minish Cap they talk about a time long before even Ocarina of Time uh, whether or not Link and Zelda existed at that time that's uh, speculated up to Nintendo to draw up a game that determines that but um, I'm pretty sure that they existed through that time but it they probably weren't not really involved in that world. That's why they made a game called Minish Cap to do all of that. But if you look at the beginning of the game, you'll notice that um, when Zelda, when Link defeats Ganon, and Zelda takes the Ocarina of Time and sends Link back to his time, that Zelda then left that timeline in which Link was in, abandoned. Which, if you play the beginning of Wind Waker, it tells you exactly what happens. Wind Waker tells you what happens years after Link returns back to his old time. So, if Ocarina of Time is here in the middle, right, um, <clears throat> it doesn't split into two timelines. It's uh, like, so it's not like Ocarina's in the middle and then it breaks off down here and then one breaks off here. It's just Ocarina is in, 
is down, is right here and then an alternate timeline um, spins off because when Link returns back to his time, right, he goes on, he lets Zelda know about the plan that Ganon has, which they state in the book that's coming out, and then they create a plan to stop Ganon in their original time, which then births Majora's Mask and then a new timeline sets off from there. And then in this timeline, since Link left that timeline and went back home, there was no Link in this time in this future, but there was a time of peace, but then Ganon came back and then Ganon flooded the world and yada yada yada. So now where does the other games fit in, such as um Minage Cap, such as Phantom of the Hourglass, Twilight Princess, and um, and what's the name is and Spirit Tracks. That is up to you guys to find out what it is. I have my own theory on that, but I don't want to spoil the timeline. I just wanted to voice my opinion on what I thought the beginning and the ending was, which should be not common knowledge, but practical knowledge to everybody by now. So. Uh, in closing, I really hope this book doesn't really spoil everything by putting things together. I hope that it just pretty much push, uh, put some theories out there to make the make us want to replay the game all over again and, and look for those little clues and stuff like that. And I really hope that the next Zelda game that they're making um, somehow uh, integrates those clues from the other games so we can make the adventure and the legend all that more better. Anyway, this is Triforce um, from the God's Ark Empire Arcade in New York. And I'll, see, I'll let you guys know what's going to happen in the next updates when I put up another video. Thanks.